Hello, welcome to Year 11 Statistics. We are in Specialist Mathematics. We are going to produce some simulations of some probability experiments and look at um, ways we can simulate random sampling. So first off, some probability experiments. We're going to be drawing on um, random number generator functions in Excel or Google Sheets to um, simulate the outcomes of, say, flipping a coin or rolling a die or um, maybe drawing an object fr um, randomly from a bag, like a, a coloured ball. So let's start off with, um, let's produce a simulation of flipping a biased coin five times and we're going to observe the number of heads we get. So a biased coin is where the probability of flipping a head, for instance, isn't 0.5. Okay, it could be biased towards flipping a head, so it might be 0.6 or 0.7 or something greater than 0.5. We're going to see how that's going to affect the outcome. So, in our Google Sheet, we're first we're interested in for our problem here, we're flipping a coin a number of times. We want to first identify a cell that's going to be our probability of flipping a head. So there's our probability uh, for flipping a biased coin. All right. Now let's um, produce a, a function that's going to simulate a digital coin. So we're going to use an if statement. So if rand, now the rand function uh, is a random number generator but it's going to generate a number between 0 to 1 just like a probability quantity. So if the random probability that is less than a 0 0.6 which is, or the probability of our head which is in this cell here then we're going to produce a, a head. Okay. Else if it's not less than zero, the probability of a head. If it's greater than, if it is going to be a point um, greater than 0 0.6, then it's the complement. It's the, the other range of probabilities from 0 0.6 up to 1, which is a 0 0.4. So that will be the situation of flipping a tail. So there's the formula that we're going to use. Okay, and we get our probability of, um, there's our, our digital coin. So the goal of the simulation was let's have a look at doing this uh, five flips of the coin. So that's one coin, two, three, four, five. Five flips of a coin. There they are. Now, so far they're all tails, but the reason why they're all tails is because think about how I've produced my fu my function. Have a look at what's changing there. It goes from you know, C1 and then D1 and then E1 and then F1. So I'm um, I'm missing my probability amounts ref referencing this cell. So that's not very good. Let's try that again. What's important to do is to fix the reference to a particular cell that we don't want to change, such as um, C1. It has to be fixed at C1. So to do that in, in Google Sheets, we're going to use a dollar sign over the reference. So that's going to fix the column and it will also fix the row. So now when I click and drag one, two, three, four, five, and I've got five flips. Now I've got changing. There we have it. Okay. Now I can press Control R to recalculate my formulas, and it in fact produces different flips. Fantastic. And there we have it. Okay. So that is one experiment produced. Okay. Now, what we might be interested in is knowing how many heads have occurred. So let's set up a column that's going to cal calculate the number of heads observed. Okay, now to get that centered in your cell, we can click on this one, the wrap text. And there we go. So it helps with the formatting. We might want to center it. There we go. That's a bit better. All right. So we want to count the row and how many heads are observed. So we're going to use a count if function. And we're interested in counting that row of outcomes. Five, the um, flipping a coin five times. 
So it's from A2 to E2 in this case. And press comma. And now I'm going to enter the criteria. So what I'm interested in is counting heads. There's my number of heads. So whenever it sees a H, it's going to count that. Two. So that's correct. So I've got two heads there. One, two, and it's counted that. All right. So I've counted the desired outcomes from my uh, random experiment. Now, when we do a simulation, we need to reproduce our experiment a number of times. And we to get a good result where the relative frequency uh, is more proportional and similar to the theoretical probabilities, we need to do it over a large number of trials. So let's look at quite a number of repeats. So what we're going to do is highlight all that data that the random experiment of flipping the coin five times and number of heads observed. Let's copy that whole lot. And now from that we're going to copy that all the way down to a number of rows. So a quick way of doing that is holding down the control button and the shift button and pressing that down arrow. Boom. Haha. -ha. And that's copied it down all the way to the, the last row that I have in my book in, on my Google Sheet. Now, got to be careful doing that on uh, Microsoft Excel because if you press control shift and down you're going to go to the very very last row um, and that's you know quite high in the tens of thousands so maybe not the best idea maybe just a thousand trials is okay for this one so I've copied my first row I've highlighted the whole region down to a thousand rows and now I'm going to paste so I press control V and there it is there's the random experiment being produced up to about th uh, up to almost a thousand times. Okay, very good. So, from there, we are interested in the relative frequency of the different number of heads observed out of five flips. Now, what are the possible numbers of heads? So, numbers of heads observed. Okay, these are the outcomes, possible outcomes. Well, we could flip all five coin, five tails, so we've got zero heads. We could flip one head out of the five, two, three, four, or five, that's right. Okay, zero to five are all our possible outcomes of um, flipping five coins, how many heads we can get. So let's just center that data, okay. Now let's get the relative frequency of each that we observed in our simulation. So this relative frequency is the number of desired outcomes observed. So we're going to count um, how many um, numbers of heads of zero pop up out of how many trials we've repeated our, our experiment altogether. Okay. So we're going to do that as using a count if function and a count function. All right, so count if. Now, the first thing we have to count, it, we have to put in here for the syntax is the range. So the range we used here is the first cell is there of our range, and then the last one went all the way down to the last cell in this in this spreadsheet when I pressed Control Shift and down and that was 1000. So it goes from F2 to F1000. That was the last row in our in our sheet. All right, so before we do anything, let's fix the reference on here using our dollar sign. So put the dollar sign in front of the column reference, the F, and put a dollar sign in front of the row reference as well, the 2 and the 1000. All right, fantastic. So that's the range. So we're counting all the number of heads observed. Now, what's what do we want to count? What's the criteria behind that? Well, let's count first the number of heads when it's a zero. So that's this cell up here. These are the required um, amounts or values of the random variable that we want to count. So we just reference that with a, uh, a click of the, the first reference there, the first cell. 
All right, so that's going to count all the number of the the um, out the incidences where the number of heads is zero out of our all our simulated um, trials. And now let's divide by the total number of trials we have. So that is a simple count, and this is an easy way of doing it. And we want to use that exact same range as before. So I'm just going to hi highlight that range and press Control C to copy and control V to paste in the count function and I hit enter and there's my relative frequency for the number of heads of zero okay so let's write represent the number in a sensible uh, decimal value so maybe there we go three decimal place that's fine okay let's complete our, fr our relative frequency table for our other outcomes so all we have to do is now click on that formula that's set up ready to go and drag it across to all the possible values of our number of heads from 0 to 5 and there they are fantastic now if you have a look at those values what we find is the sum of all those values is gives us a particular number let's have a look let's use the sum function and I'm going to sum all those amounts and what do we get the sum of one so that kind of makes sense because the total probability okay is one probability is a quantity from zero to one so the probability of all the possible outcomes added together gives you a total of one that's an important thing about a probability table Okay, now let's see how we can represent our relative frequencies of our outcomes as a histogram. So I'm going to highlight the data there. So starting from including my headings, number of heads and relative frequency, and capturing from zero to five and their, rel and their associated relative frequencies. And now I'm going to insert a chart. Now, Google Sheets is somewhat intuitive and it gives us some recommendations. So the best one here is our histogram. There it is. And voila, we have done it. So what's important with this, and I'd like to illustrate what's going on, is we can see that as we change the bias, on our probability of, of getting ahead, say let's um, increase the chances of flipping ahead to maybe 0.8. What happens to the distribution? There it is, it, be, it skews to the right. Okay, and you see the most probable uh, outcome there appears to, to be this one. Ah, but we've got a little issue. Let's have a look at our scale down the bottom. I don't like that scale. It needs to be whole numbers. So Let's edit the axes. I want a minimum of zero and a maximum of five on our scale. There we go. That's more better. So we can clearly see the whole number um, integer values of the number of heads that we're after. So what about if we change the, the bias on our probability of heads again to, uh, to favor a tail, in fact. So the probability of flipping a head is 0.1. And look at, let's look at the distribution now. It skews to the left. Okay, and you can see the most probable in this case is now closer to being a zero. And let's put it back in the middle, 0.5. When it's 0.5, the distribution is symmetrical. And you can see how the expected most probable score or the mean score here is somewhere in the middle between two and three heads. And there we have it.